Thomas Jones, former running back uh, of the Bears, Jets, Cardinals, et cetera. Great career. 10,000 yards rushing. Yeah. Now, Thomas Q. Jones, actor. He was here, and I brought up with him, you know, the Cody Parkey missed field goal. Right. Which, at the time, um, he did not yet know that it was ruled a block. Okay. Right. That wasn't official. It wasn't official yet. Yeah. They hadn't changed it officially, the stat. Right. And he was talking about how, you know, you feel bad or whatever, but you're supposed to make a kick. And if he had fumbled it twice, he'd be out of the game. And how Rex Grossman threw the pick six in the Super Bowl against the Colts that sealed the game as opposed to leading them down the field for a touchdown when they could all live in glory for the rest of their lives. And he said that Rex threw it in the double coverage. And I'm like, did you say anything to him at all? And his response was, he hasn't spoken to him since that day. Wow. He didn't say anything to him afterwards, and he's never said anything to him since. And I'm just wondering. 12 years ago. I know. Who's that person in your sporting life? Oh, man. You know, I still love John Starks, despite his. Okay. Shooting performance against the Houston Rockets. I mean, that's a good one. That's a good one for you and all Knicks fans. Um, I, I, it's just that would be one of them. I'm guessing Cubs fans probably Bartman. But, but, but even if they say Bartman, it's like, you know, then what about Alex Gonzalez who let the double play ball go through his wickets after that? Right. I mean, that's kind of but. Not that anything like this is rational, but no, of course not. To me, it's like you know, I can't like I can't stand Kenny Rogers of the Yankees years ago. Really? Yeah. What about the Kevin Brown era? Ugh. I mean, for me, Grady Little keeping in Pedro, like, well, what are we doing? So Grady Little, I'm like still mad about that. Is your Rex Grossman? Pretty much, yeah. And the Red Sox had the Yankees beat that year in 03. You're just unforgivable. Can't beat. That, you know. An unforgivable move. Like, if I saw Grady Little, oh. Would you, would you walk out of the room? I, I'd probably start heckling him wherever he was at. I wonder what yours is out there. 844-204-RICH. The, uh, the infamous in- interception Brett Favre threw in the NFC Championship game. Oh, I think it was like 2008, I think. That uh, that kind of ruined me, man. I, I knew we were just bound to win. You know, we we just had the best. I think we just had the best crew that year. And he throws a throws that interception, and then the Giants go down and kick the field goal. I think I, I might have had about 15 beers, and I was laying on the ground for about an hour after that. 12 years ago, uh, Marlon McCree intercepts Tom Brady and gets stripped of the ball, and. Uh, the Chargers go on to lose that game against the Patriots. Could have been Marlon McCree as my Rex Grossman or Nate Caden, but I think it's got to be Marlon McCree. The Chargers go to the Super Bowl and end up beating Rex Gross with a Thomas Jones Mar- if, if he makes that. I'm speaking on behalf of Marlon McCree saying, are you going to choose me over Nate Caden and you're a Charger fan <laughs> talking about playoffs? Like, what is your malfunction? Wow. I'll take it, though. My most hated player is Plaxico Burris. I will tell people, until the end of time, except for maybe the 86 team, that the 08 team, not the 07, not the 11 Super Bowl teams, the 08 team was the best we ever had. And we lost it. We went 11 and 0. We had beaten a lot of great teams through that stretch. And then he goes and shoots himself in the leg, and our season ends with a whimper 23 11 to the Eagles in the playoffs. Well, Nathan, two things. One, he did catch the touchdown pass for you in 07. That's two. Uh, one. And two is that um, he did go to prison for it, so I don't know if that's any sort of, you know, consolation prize for you that he was a mis- he was a miserable, incarcerated human being, but I don't know if that matters. 1997, bottom of the ninth, Miami, Florida. Game seven. Two outs away from our first World Series in 48 years. Jose frickin' Mason. <laughs> oh, Is that his no. middle name? Oh, no. Mitch Williams under the bus. The only guy I've never met but still hated all the same. I was in the sixth grade, Rich, when he gave up that game-ending World Series winning home run to Joe Carter sitting in my living room and my fitted Philly sat that I saved $20 to go to Champ Sports to buy with my hard-earned money, and he pissed it all away. And I uh, cried that night, Rich, and I'm not proud to say it, 
but I'm not in the sixth grade anymore. If I ever see that guy again, <laughs> uh, Rich, I swear. Who's your athlete you can't forgive? There's a few. Uh, but one in particular, 1999 National League Championship Series, Kenny Rogers for the Mets walks Andrew Jones. I think it was Andrew Jones. Walks in the winning run. Kenny Rogers is one of the worst New York athletes of And all the Braves time. go to the World Series. Kenny Rogers was fantastic for the Texas Rangers, and then he came to New York, and then he just – some people just can't handle New York, which is why I could never believe why the Jets would look at Kirk Cousins and say, that's a New York athlete right there. That guy screams of not New York athlete. Sweetheart of a guy, has a real red-ass streak, I'm sure, that we don't see enough of. That whole, you like that thing, was so out of character. But Kenny Rogers, man. Yeah, game six, extra innings. No, please. Walks in the winning run. Kenny Rogers, the Yankees won, I think, the 96 World Series in spite of Kenny Rogers. He has a perfect game and a World Series. I know that. I know that. I know that. The guy is uh, incredibly talented. I know. He had a World Series ring in 96, but the Yankees, he was he was like, they, they couldn't use him after a while. Yeah, Andrew Jones, good call, TJ. My brother-in-law, Scott Schuster. You there, Scotty? Night. Uncle Rich, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Rich is fine. What's going on, Uncle Scotty? Uncle Cotty? Yeah, man, I mean, look, I, you guys have some great guests today, so I don't want to keep this short, but, you know, you yeah. called me a math hole, very hurtful. <laughs> Sorry. Um, true. You know, somewhat, maybe somewhat true, but whatever. Okay. Um, I just had a, I just had a quick little response just to each a point brought up by the three of you guys. Okay, sure. Okay? Yeah. Brock, you know, you guys talk about hating your own players. or I don't get so greedy little hate. He left in the greatest pitcher of all time. A batter too too long, you know it happens. You know, would you rather lose a Pedro or Timlin? And Asante Samuel shouldn't have had that. I was at that game. That was a tough play, Chris. You can't blame Asante Samuel. He was a great Patriot. It went right through his hands. It's yeah, nineteen and zero, Scott. That's, that, yeah, that's not an easy play, Chris. That that ball, that ball was gunned by Eli. And then, by the way, the the one Syracuse guy that I hate the most is Scoop Jardine, who is oh. personally responsible for our. Huge loss to Butler. The, that team was stacked and might have gone to the championship against Duke. So that's 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 my bone to pick with uh, you, Chris. But, but, but what to... about your Boston one, Scott? Because you're, you're putting yeah. on the best face forward right now, Scotty. You are really putting on the best face here. There has to be some Boston yeah, sports. Yeah, you can't tell me you weren't angst. pissed at Grady Little and Asante on those plays. Well, yeah, I'm trying to put on the best face. No, I wasn't <laughs> pissed. At, I, I, you know. Bob Stanley is the guy who comes to mind from Boston because, you know, he blew it in 78. People forget he gave up the home run to Reggie Jackson that made it 5-2. to two. And then we all know what he did in 86. But I have a great personal story about Bob Stanley that made it all up for him. Okay. Uh, you know, so I'm not angry with him anymore. Okay. Do you want to you, – you wanna? was he good to the Jimmy Fund or something like that? Did he do some no, good – you know, No, he, I was at a golf tournament, and um, he, he had just showered. And he he was, uh, and a gentleman came over to him and said, Mr. Stanley, you know, and I was talking to him about the baseball, whatever, we have a nice conversation, but he's dripping wet. And uh, a gentleman comes over and said, uh, Mr. Stanley, and it just interrupted him. He said, Bob, can you sign this? And he put the ball right in front of me. He goes, I just took a shower. Do you want me to wipe myself with the ball after I sign it, or do you want it to be smudged? And the guy was so rude, and he said it like with a serious face. Everyone else was crying around there, and the guy's like, um, no, I don't want it to be smudged. And he goes, okay, then I'll get you upstairs. Bob and, uh, Stanley, so, everybody. Oh, man, that's funny. And, all right. and, 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 all, and all was forgiven. All right, Scotty, good chatting with you, brother. And law. See you. you got it. There's Scott, Scott shoes doing it. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.